Okay. There are a lot of you online today. It's the place to be, Michael. Good morning, Morgan. I'm a professor over in Media Arts. I'm in McGill Hall, room 127. That's the Media Arts Mac Lab. And I need to be able to share audio through Zoom, but it doesn't look like um, anyone has installed the Zoom audio device. So it's requiring a username and password administrator. Hey, can you log into the main computer and get that installed for me really quick? Let's see here. Oh, this. Don't this map. There is not. There is not. This is a Mac. It's a 21 inch uh, late 2012 iMac. Mm hmm hmm great call yep. it's mmh one two seven dash mm dot local Yeah, so let me go back to Zoom here. We'll stop screen sharing, start screen sharing, share for sound. Well, share.
goodness gracious, I am sorry, everyone. My charging cable has died this morning. So I tried to use the school computer, but we're missing the Thunderbolt 2 to HDMI adapter. After I called IT to get them to make Zoom work, it's just a cluster. Michael Murphy has been so nice as to loan me a charging cable. So we'll move forward with that. For those of you on Zoom, uh, I'm gonna sign in on another account here in a moment. I think you'll see him easily switch over. <laughs> mm, okay, everyone's still there. You can hopefully hear me now. Hear me now. Hopefully, hopefully see, see me now. now. Now let's quit out over here. Excuse me. Audio. Okay. Okay. Big lab studio. Stereo mode. Okay. Kill that. Kill that. Kill that. 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 Okay, sorry, just about done here.
Okay, how is everyone doing? And I'm sorry, everyone okay? Good. People in virtual land, you can hear me okay? Oh yeah. 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 Sorry, did you say something, Cole? I was, you were turned down. I just said, oh yeah, we can hear you. Lovely. Well, thank you for everyone for joining me. All right, here, let's get a microphone plugged into the big knob. That'll work. And, uh, oh, I think. think. Okay, shoot, shoot dog. All right. What is a filter? Yeah. Kind of like uh, mining for gold in <laughs> California. Just taking out parts of the sound and then choosing a specific range of the sound that you want. Yeah, more generally though, because we we see filters in lots of different applications within media arts and electronic arts. What other applications do we see filters? Yep. Yep. Absolutely. What else? We filter through results. Is it to give something a different effect, maybe? Yeah, yeah. And where's where's that become incredibly popular? In well, not as much at the moment, but three years ago was incredibly popular. Oh, I don't know. Like Snapchat. Snapchat filters, Snapchat. Yeah. yeah, right. Or Instagram filters that affect the whole photo. So, what is a filter? Uh, it's something that alters what's already existing in some way. I like that. It's a filter essentially takes some data and alters it or changes it up in some sort of way. Yeah. So we'll just think of a filter real generally um, from that kind of perspective. I'm curious if we search filter in Safari, what comes up? What? What is the definition of filter? The porous device for removing impurities or solid particle from a liquid or gas pass through it. Mm, I like it. The mass of material is sand or paper. So filtering uh, in the gold mining type sense or for water or beer. Yeah, uh, what is the definition of a digital? filter system that performs mathematical operations on a discrete and sampled time signal so as to enhance or reduce certain aspects of that system in signal processing oh i like this one in signal processing a digital filter is a system that performs mathematical operations on a sampled 
discrete time signal to reduce or enhance certain aspects of that signal. This is in contrast to the other major type of electronic filter, the analog filter, which is typically an electronic circuit operating on continuous time analog signals. So again, a filter um, essentially takes in data and does something with that data to change the nature of the data itself. In audio-based digital signal processing, what's the most basic type of filter you could imagine? Yeah, and what specifically? Which one of those? One of those is incredibly simple. The other one is incredibly complex. Yeah. It's right, Matt, you got it. It's a low pass filter. It's a guess, it's a guess though. So um, let's say, let's say we've got some data points. Low pass, low pass. All right, and what would a low pass filter do to this signal potentially? It lets the low pass, hence low pass. Yeah. I always thought that just screwed up in time, right? What's a very basic type of filter you all could think about if we're thinking about basic digital signal processing? Any ideas? Say we want to reduce noise in a signal. I know this is like what the weird fucking question is. This this doesn't make shit for sense. Do you repeat the question? Yeah. You see this signal on my screen. There's a whole bunch of noise in it. Let's say I want to reduce some of that noise. No. Do you find some kind of noise filter? Yeah, 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 yeah. But let's say I want to program it. Um, no, no, no. no. <laughs> What happens if I take uh, these three points here? I add them together and I find the average. Well, let's just assume the average is probably something like this, right? Yeah, everyone okay with that? Everyone can agree with that? We'll do the next three points. Um, we'll say the average is probably something like this. Next three points. So again, we're thinking one, two, three. Average is something like this. Next three points is here, 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 here. And if we draw this new curve, you see how we're reducing some of that noise? A moving mean or moving average is the most simple type of filter we can have. It's a very simple type of filter. We take two or more points, average them together, find out what their value is. So we move on to the next three points, do the same thing. This reduces high frequency noise. Hence, a low pass filter is the most simple type of filter we can have. This is an FYI. And we could do a low pass filter again by essentially taking um, sample one plus. Sample two, uh, excuse me here, dividing by two, and that equals um, sample result. Kind of make sense? Yep. So again, one, two, then one, two, one, two, one, two, one. So again, if we were just kind of finding the averages of these points over time, it's going to reduce this noise and essentially low pass filter our signal. So just as an FYI, a um, low pass filter 
is the simplest type of filter we can have. That's just good to know. Yeah. No, high frequency stuff. What? It's all the high frequencies. As you filter out that noise, that's all high frequency noise. It's going to reduce essentially the frequency, the max frequency that we can have. I mean, you set the cutoff point, yeah. It's not always set to a certain frequency. Ah, uh, this part doesn't matter. I'm just curious if anyone knew. What matters here is uh, different types of filters. Go away. Go away. So, low, fast. All right, inverse of that is then high pass. And what does a high pass filter do? Yeah, exactly. And then uh, we got, what is this one? No. Is it a mid pass filter? Close band pass filter. Yeah. <laughs> a combination band pass filter kind of three general types of filters oops i want you to stay hidden hmm? it lets the mid-range pass right Say that again. It lets a certain band pass. Yeah, well, band pass filter also has a uh, is same as a cutoff, but it would be essentially a midpoint frequency. And then a Q level. And that Q level dictates how wide the band pass is. And there's, of course, also a band cut. Oh, that's too low. Band cut. Where it cuts out a certain frequency. Okay, so kind of general four types of filters to be aware. Let's listen to what these sound like. So we'll do this to start today. Um, our uh, no arguments for the moment. Variable signal. Um, We'll call this um, um, we'll call this filter freak for the time being. <laughs> so you're gonna make it do it. Great. <laughs> All right. So it's a freak, and then um, 
which we may or may not use uh, initially. So signal we're going to initially set to be white noise. Dot AR. Um, mole will do negative six dot dB amplitude just so it's nice and quietish. Um, signal. This is where we will filter the white noise signal. We'll get to that in a second. I thought they are. We'll then just send it out for the time being. And uh, just so everyone can hear what this sounds like. Oh, boots. Um, zoom audio device. Uh, Yeah, it's moving. Oh, okay. I think my sample rate's gonna be a mismatch. Audio MIDI. Let's see here. Big knob. We'll set that to be um, two twenty four forty eight. We'll boot again. Command B on Mac, Control B on Windows. All right. Right, white noise. How exciting. Okay, we said low pass filters, the most simple filter you can have. Let's hear. No, uh, dot two, which uh, duplicates the signal. Again, so we can do that a couple of ways. We could go sig. Sig, which would duplicate it. We could do sig, sig, um, exclamation, which does multi channel expansion, or I can say dot duplicate, which also creates just an array of the same thing. Low pass filter. So we're going to go lpf.ar. We'll pull up uh, help on that just so we can see it here. Second order Butterworth low pass filter. Its argument takes an input signal, a cutoff frequency. Uh, mole and add. So filter and um, we'll set filter freak to the mouse x dot kr so you can hear it. It will go from 20 to 20,000 and we'll pull that. Right, so you can all hear. Great, so got a low pass filter. Let's do the same thing. High pass filter, very similar HPF. Right, we can hear that high pass filter at work. Now, next one, and pass filter. We'll pull open this. So band pass filter, notice we have uh, input signal frequency and then the reciprocal of Q. Q is conventionally defined as frequency divided by bandwidth, meaning RQ is equal to bandwidth divided by frequency. So, um, Q is going to be equal to amounts y dot kr, and I believe we're just looking for values between zero and one. Yes. Uh, 
We'll talk about this a little bit more in just a second here, but first let's hear it. Let's, it's not actually giving us, we're gonna go 1.1. 1. 1. Maybe. I know it's not supposed to be. <laughs> so, in theory, if it's at one, there shouldn't be any effect on the free on the filter. That's what I was curious about. Clearly, there still is, but we can talk about that here in a second. So, um, notice though, when it's nearly one, it's quite wide. Whereas if I start to come down with it. Yeah, you start to hear. That's my band cast. Yeah, because eventually, if we um, if this is our fill, if this is our frequency range, and um, we have a band pass, let's say, uh, let's say we're at two hundred right now, two hundred hertz. And that's our center is around 200. Sorry, I did a bad job drawing it. Let's redo it. And we have a Q of, Q is uh, essentially divided by frequency. So let's just say whatever. Right now we're hearing from 100 Hertz to 600 Hertz or something, okay? That's what we hear. If we have a tighter Q, meaning closer to zero. So let's say this is just, as an example, 0 0.1, we have a tighter Q. Less of that frequency range is getting through, right? So we would hear fewer frequencies. That's why what we're hearing right now is essentially just a single sign off because it's such a narrow band. Um, what do you mean? <laughs> Nothing, yeah. Oh, because it's zero, that's why I can't work. I forget that. Um, warp uh, essentially adds an exponential curve, but if you try to add an exponential curve on zero, you get not a number, which causes things to freak out. So then we subtract one from the whole thing and just do it that way. So I can essentially 
tilt my range more. So again, we can hear that. So that's a band pass filter. All right, these all are just straight filters. They don't affect the sound or they shouldn't add too much extra effect to the sound apart from uh, removing portions of the spectrum that you don't want to hear. There's another type of filter to be aware of called a resonance filter. A resonant filter is mathematically actually a easier filter to code up and a resonant filter has a resonance at the filter cutoff frequency. So if we had a low, a resonant low pass filter, it might look something like this, where there's actually where there's actually a filter resonance at our cutoff frequency points of some amount. This is going to have a very similar effect to the bandpass, very narrow bandpass filter that we just heard, where it's going to accentuate certain frequency contents. So we'll copy this whole thing in again. We'll go resonant low pass filter, and we'll pull it up here. And notice we have that RQ back again, the reciprocal Q. So let's grab our code for that. And listen to what this sounds like. So again, not, not horribly uh, different than what we were expecting. But notice that my key is Actually need to add here on this sig the limiter dot a r sig three dot g g And as that Q gets closer and closer to zero, it accentuates that cutoff frequency more. We will notice the exact same thing. Cancel, hide that nonsense. If we copy this, resonant low pass filter. There's a high pass filter. Again, remember, we're just passing in white noise. That's all that the initial thing is going in. It's the same spectrum going equal frequency at every equal power at every frequency. I got a question, Doc. Dr. Music? One second, Paul. Okay. Well, what is it? What is the acoustic acoustics based definition of resonance? Everyone remembers Galloping Gertie from high school physics? The Tacoma Narrows Bridge that died. None of this is ringing a bell. What about uh, opera singers who can resonate wine glasses? Sympathetic. Resonance is any object 
or space has, has resonant frequency, quote unquote. And resonant frequencies are frequencies that can establish in an object or space due to its physical properties. So I'm in this classroom right now that let's say is 50 feet wide by 20 feet deep. Across this 50 foot width, there are low frequencies that are um, harmonic multiples of that distance that can set up and reinforce each other. And those would be the resonant frequencies of this dimension of the room. A tuning fork has a resonant frequency based upon its physical characteristics. A bell has a resonant frequency and typically we'd be most interested in the fundamental resonant frequency of a bell where it naturally wants to resonate. We can cause objects to resonate at other frequencies, but they don't naturally want to do it. So they would not be resonant frequencies. So in a resonant filter, we are taking the cutoff filter frequency and the map of it essentially causes it to have a natural resonance at that filter frequency cutoff. Cole, what was your question, sir? It was the exact same one. Great. Did that answer it for you? Yep. Cool. Um, so, oh, first off, we should have done band reject filter earlier. So let's hold your thought there. Matthew. Okay. And reject filter. I just let Dr. Music know we lost him. Are you going? Wait, what happened? I don't know, but we lost him. Oh. Hey, there he is. Man, just one of those days technologically, my computer apparently had come unplugged. So uh, no fun. All right, let's try this again. Screen share, share sound, share. We'll come back over here. Well, it seems like it's going. Okay, and can everyone out in Cyberland still hear me okay? Yep. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Okay. Band reject filter. Let's hear it. You know what would be useful for this, actually? on all of these is a freak scope. Let's pull this up here and we'll do this again. But notice um, when I've got a little... I don't hear a lot because it's a wide spectrum noise signal pulling out a very narrow frequency band doesn't hear a lot of noise. If the two larger, closer to one, starts to see starts to see 
screen. That band reject actually is like, so we can hear it too. And this is where having a larger value, let's see if this blows things up. Oh, oops. <laughs> yeah, server, that kill. Oh, my computer doesn't have enough fucking battery here to function like it needs to. Hmm. All right. Well, it looks like you have a really cool you filter on you. Does it look real cool? It looks it looks like a really cool filter, you know, just like we're talking about. Oh man, look at that! <laughs> like a drawn charcoal thing. It's rad. Low power glitch filters. <laughs> yes. But we can't go below zero. That causes things to be super unhappy. Um, So, so in the case of like this uh, band pass filter, it's actually the reciprocal of Q. And it states here that Q is defined as frequency divided by band width. So our Q then is equal to band width divided by frequency. In this case, our cutoff frequency. So, um, um, bills for the month, go away bills. Come on, computer. No. <laughs> no. No. Dial. Okay. So, um, If bandwidth is something like 80 and our cutoff filter is 100, we'd get an RQ of 0 0.8. If our bandwidth is something like 2 hertz, we get an RQ of 0 0.02. So the lower it is, the essentially the less bandwidth. Um, I mean, we can think about this. So if yeah, Q, there's no unit. It's a, it's a reciprocal relationship. So our Q though is equal to um, width divided by frequency. 
Oh. Well, that's not quite great. There we go. Frequency like that. Um, so if we wanted to get width by itself, what would we do to this equation? We would multiply by frequency. So we'd put F over here. And then that gives us frequency times RQ is equal to width. So we're trying to figure out how wide we want it to be. That's how we can separate width and start to figure that out. So you know, no, and that's true for all signal processing on this. It's a reciprocal relationship. So it depends on what your frequency is, your cutoff frequency is, and there is no specific unit. For sure. For sure. Yeah. Yeah, it's like that. Cool. So the next one I wanted to look at was uh, we looked at low pass, resident low pass, high pass, resident high pass, band pass, band reject, or oh, resin free. So resonance is a resonant filter, the same as ring, except that it has a constant gain at zero dB instead of being a constant skirt. So it's a two-pole resonant filter. Let's just look at their examples here so we can get a sense of what it sounds like. So notice our, it's in our resonant frequency and then bandwidth ratio. So reciprocal of Q, same as we saw before. Uh, if we modulate the frequency from 1,000 to 8,000 with a bandwidth ratio of 0 0.05. Likewise, if we keep our frequency set at 2,000 and then we modulate the bandwidth from 1 to 0 0.001. No, so resonant low pass, resonant high pass, it's always at the cutoff filter. Yeah, so same thing if we had a resonant high pass filter, it would look like that. For a resonance filter, it's essentially like a band pass, but it does a better job of resonating that band. Whereas when I was trying to do band pass and resonate a single frequency, you notice how we had a large uh, attenuation in amplitude of the frequency itself. Resins does a better job of keeping that frequency uh, present. In a resonant low pass filter, we get a resonant frequency at the cutoff point. So if we wanted to use that for synthesis for some reason in particular, is often when you would do that. Or if we're trying to resonate, um, so let's do, let's set up an, another example. Say again. The cutoff frequency, we're saying, I want you to resonate at that frequency. Um, no, they're rolled off. Yeah. 
Does that <laughs> help you out or make you more upset with me? No, no. Uh, it depends on the quality of the filter. They're second order, so I think it's um, I think it's like twelve dB every octave. Say again. No, certainly not. Because we're working in the time domain. If we're working in the frequency domain and we use an FFT, we can actually start to get a cleaner filter. But when we're working in the time domain, we're dealing with linear algebra. So it brings us back into the physical dirtiness of the world. Um, yeah, it is. Say that again. Yeah. And that's why when we're dealing with DAWs, filter plugins cost various levels because cert, because people put so much money into the development of their filter algorithms. Yeah. And some people try to add dirt back in because they want it to sound analog. Some people don't want it to sound perfect and digital. Some people want to have certain characteristics. Um, yes, yeah, yep. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Actually, do this first. Let's do Example, um, I'm tracking the frequency of my voice, fundamental frequency estimation of my voice, and that's driving the cutoff frequency of a resonant low pass filter with a fairly small Q value. And this allows us to essentially kind of create a pitch following um, filtered white noise, a pink noise signal. We can do the same thing with the microphone signal itself and see if we can't get some great feedback here. Hey. Hey, 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 yo, what are we I don't know, we're just exploring sound. That's what we're doing, we're just exploring sound. Sound is great. And then let's make it higher. Now, now you start to hear more of my voice itself. Why don't we do instead, we'll do, um, Resonance. Uh, frequency goes from uh, 20 to 20,000. Oh, I need to say again. Oh, 0 0.5 is the end. Sorry. 0 0.5 is the RQ value. Yeah. No, no, not part of No, say again. So, at the end of the question, you follow the Yeah, 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 yeah. Resonance is like a bandpass filter, whereas. 
if we listen though to the difference between our bandpass filter here. Um, left, resins. Let's try this. We'll do bandpass and left, resins and right. So, um, uh, bandpass, resins, bandpass, and we'll do, yeah, let's just see here, resins. So let's res. Yeah, uh, there you are. Big. The first say six equals. Yeah. 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 Um, and I could do the same thing here by going D T. Um, no, because I'm replacing the signal. Um, yeah, and here we'll play one out of one speaker. It's kind of hard to actually see the difference. But they're, they're just, so this is a great example, actually. BPF and resins do fundamentally the same thing, but they have a different quality of sound to them. And we picked the one that has the quality of sound that more closely tracks with what we're trying to do. Yeah. Right here. Uh -huh. What is pitch doing? Yeah, it's it's attempting to estimate the fundamental frequency of the signal. Yeah, because we can't track every frequency and get anything valuable out of it. Yeah, really. So we're trying to say, what is this resonant sound we're hearing? Is there a fundamental frequency? What is my best guess as to what that is? As, yeah, it's outputting it as its best guess frequency. So if I go, you see that it's guessing. Now, if I go. It's not quite getting there as slow as I want to. Oh, and that's because my lag is probably being applied on the wrong space because this is actually giving us an array. So we'll go lag. Here, let's see what that sounds like. Yes. And we want to make this much smaller. It's a matter of seconds. You hear it tracking me over the course of two seconds. And I can make that larger. You can hear it trying to go, oh, and 
then it tries to come back up to me. And the whole point is just to accentuate that resonant frequency as it tries to get back to me again. Yeah. Well, so pitch is giving out an array of two values, an estimated fundamental frequency. And the second value, if it's a one, it feels very confident that it's found the fundamental frequency. If it's a zero, it's a low confidence factor. Okay. So here in line 169, I'm saying I want the cutoff frequency to be the fundamental frequency estimation from pitch, but specifically the only thing I care about is the first value. I don't care about its, its confidence in its measure. So lag is going to be like two phase. So oh, lag is a low pass lag, filter. Lag, lag, is a, lag is a method of frequency. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Lag is a low pass filter for signals. <laughs> Damn it! So, Why? Yeah. Yeah. So let's say we've got a value here. We're going to call it. Um, we're going to call it. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Why not? Variable. Um, frequency is equal to frequency dot lag. Okay, so they're all online. It is driving me nuts. But I appreciate people being safe for our community. That's cool. Uh, oh. And now, now. Well, let's actually, for the moment, I'm going to comment out this line. Uh, it's multi Famous tattoo. So much, so fast. I don't blame you. Now, if I hit that set frequency to 100, you're going to immediately go to 100. 1,000. Cool. Right? So cool. Now, uh, actually, we'll do, do like this freak two. Um, freak two is equal to. Freak dot lag by four seconds. Freak two dot pull. And um, we'll create. So we've created now multi channel expansion already. Okay. No question about what's going on at home, right? And essentially, I'm creating uh, two sine waves. One at freak, one at freak two, and I'm putting them in channels left and right. It's a low pass filter because it doesn't have that quick high noise frequency. It takes time, it's a running average to get from one value to the next. That is a low pass filter. Well, we still, in this case, what we don't hear is the left channel immediately jumps. So if we're looking at a signal of it. It's like this. It's a straight line, instantaneous, right? This is a really high frequency. And we're thinking in signals, that's a really high frequency. If we can go from one value to the next in no time, that's a high frequency. However, if we filter that out over a running average, it just filtered out the high frequencies. Uh, 
audible frequency always. Frequency is in all signals, regardless of whether they're audible or not. Which is one of those confusing, frustrating things. All signals, if they're periodic, have a fundamental frequency or a series of harmonic frequencies or whatever, regardless of whether they're audible. Everything is a signal. That's the beauty of a real-time environment. And again, just to be trying, I don't know if this would be better or worse. I know, that's how I feel too. So let's say we've got a, a, a signal. What does this look like to you? Why not? It's okay. It works. Tell me what does it look like? Cool. How many frequencies do you think are present in this signal? At least, yeah. What are they? We don't, we're not going to think in terms of synthesis, but yes, there's the fundamental frequency, which if we said that this is the, let's say that this here is one second. What's our frequency of the fundamental? Two. Two hertz. And it looks something like this. Woo, 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 woo. Right? Because I'm completing two complete oscillations, one, in this period of one second. Yeah, do you see that, Bearcat? Well, I drew the time boundaries when I asked that question. You might have just missed that. So if we say that this is one second, we can see that there's one completion, two completions. So we have a fundamental frequency of two hertz. On top of that, we have this much clearly higher frequency ding, 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 ding. and it looks something like this and when we add these two signals together we get this signal let's just for the fun of it assume oh let's say that that looks like 60 hertz i don't know how many of those repeat in that one second period If we run a running average filter of some sort, or we low pass it, it's very easy to see how we would smooth out and remove those high frequencies. Yeah, everyone kind of see that okay? Well, we're filtering the idea is that we're filtering out this frequency by running a running mean average essentially. So we're saying, what's this point? Um, what's this point plus this point plus this point? If we add those together, it gives us this point. If we take this point, this point, this point, it gives us this point. It essentially skips all of that smaller information that's happening at a quicker pace. We still get a fundamental frequency of two hertz, but we filter out 60 hertz. No, I just don't want to actually like get out a database and start going through it. You're not. You're not missing anything. But the important piece here is that um, uh, let's do this way. If we have instantaneous change, an instantaneous change from one value to the next 
represents essentially what's known as an impulse. An impulse by definition contains all frequencies. Okay. So in our example over here, if we allow a signal to go from 200 Hertz to 100 Hertz, as in the case of three, instantaneously, that's an impulse if we're thinking in terms of frequency spectrum. If we cause that to slow down over time and get there over time, we're essentially filtering out the high frequencies. It's just signal theory, which you don't need to know for this class. It's just like an extra in case it makes sense in your head. Yeah. And you're all struggling in a really positive way to grasp at this in the ways that you have embedded knowledge for. Low frequencies take longer to occur because they take more energy, there's more momentum to them. So fundamentally, you have a good understanding. Unless we decide to go look at like the actual numbers point by point and start to do them mathematically, it's hard to get there all the way. All we're saying though is that a low pass filter is the easiest type of filter. And essentially it removes high frequency content, which are quick jitters over time. It's the simplest algorithm. If we're removing noise or fast frequency signals, we're passing only low frequencies. No, I guess it makes sense to me how the frequency by 100 is going to be the same. But I don't understand how going from 200 to 100? So let's do this. A pulse wave or a square wave signal, right? And a pulse wave signal, if it was a true square wave signal, should look like this. Right? That's a square wave signal. See if this makes sense in this case. 
what's the difference between those two signals to you, uh, RLE and perceptive? Yeah, and, and how do they sound different? Yeah, okay. It's such a lovely touch of feeling. What do we notice about the frequency spectrum of the square wave? The slope is gradual, but notice that we have high frequency content all the way, okay? How is that different? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which wave has more high frequency content? Okay. Why is that? Yeah, and why do we have more harmonics in the square wave? Because of the shape of it. That's exactly it. Yeah, it's odd harmonics. Square wave is odd and even harmonics. But the point being really is this moment of transition, in theory, is all frequencies. Because it's an impulse. Whereas in a triangle wave, we've filtered out the high frequencies just by the nature of the wave itself. Because we're lagging it out. And then... Um, here, just as one final. How much high frequency content do we have with the sine oscillator? None. It's just the fundamental. With no other frequencies in it, yeah. So a, a, a triangle wave is sine waves. So in theory, a triangle wave is a sine. Uh, come here. And then, um, let's see here. I'm not quite doing So this should be two times frequency, four times frequency, eight times frequency, and at reduced amplitudes on each one. So that when we add these together, essentially we start to get something that looks like, um, uh, let's do it in white. Yeah. And the more of those we add together, we start to build up this triangle wave. We're adding more fundamentals at decreased amplitudes of odd harmonics. And when we add those all together, it eventually creates a triangle wave. So if we shortcut that and we just play a triangle wave, notice we have fundamentals all the way up in decreased amplitude. If we add all fundamentals up, at less of a decreased amplitude, we get eventually a square wave. Your why is your amplitude below zero dB full scale. Okay. Mouse x dot kr. Um, we'll go from twenty to ten. Thank you.
Okay. So, pulse wave, uh, a square wave running through a low pass filter. Notice we're starting to lose those high harmonics and that high frequency content. What do you also notice happening to the signal itself? Becoming steeper. I want you looking um, right here. Okay, that's where we're looking. Whoa. Oh, I need to zero. Because we're reducing high frequency content. Oh, that's actually cool. Right? So it starts to look more like a sine wave. Yeah. If we brought the frequency oh. up a little bit here so we could see it a little bit better, and let's start at something higher. Uh, we'll start at a thousand. We'll do a slope of like eight. Notice as I go down, it starts to look more and more like a sine wave because we're reducing frequency content or high frequency content. We're removing those high frequencies, allowing only the low pass frequencies to pass. Uh, yeah, at, so we notice we've got a frequency now, a frequency cutoff of 81 hertz over on the left. Which means the filter looks something like, let's assume this is our, let's assume this is 80. The filter looks something like, like that. So we start to get a little bit of a cutoff or an attenuation before 80, and then every octave over, we should be going down 12 dB. Well, it starts to get closer and closer to approximating our starts to get closer and closer to approximating the look of our square wave again. So we're at a hundred and 60, you notice there's a couple weird qualities to it. Uh, uh, because we've got all harmonics right now, we're not going to get a triangle wave per se, but you start to see how it gets built up and it starts to look more and more like our initial pulse width. Sine wave is the basic fundamental building block of everything in sound. To get a triangle wave or a square wave, we could add a series of sine waves together. They're just theoretical shapes, and they can be described as a series of all harmonics in reduced amplitude attenuation or odd harmonics based upon the fundamental. No. Yes. Cool. Fifteen minute break, and then we're gonna do comb filters. Comb filters. Oh, that's good. Are we gonna show our projects from last week? Uh, oh yeah, yeah, for the two of you, Fletcher and Sam, absolutely. Yeah. I'll, uh, I'll save time at the end of class, okay? Okay. Sounds good. Thank you.
And you hate black boxes. I really do. Yeah, I know. I know. Well, you're annoying yourself more than me, but it's fine. Because <laughs> I love black boxes. Mm -hmm. Can you see that color? Yeah, no.
Yeah. If what's always been called Impulse, uh, impulse, impulse response. Impulse response. An impulse response is all frequencies instantaneously, and white noise is a mathematical formula to create all frequencies in equal gain over time. Okay. Cool. Does that make sense, kind of? An impulse response? Yeah. Thank you. 
I know. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if that was useful. <laughs> yeah, I'd, uh, I'd encourage you to do that, actually. Okay, well, Any idea what a comb filter is? What's a comb sound like? Well, no. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, kind of. Comb filter is usually one that has harmonic relationships uh, up and kind of teeth, right? Like we see teeth down here. Yeah. And so each of these either band rejects or band passes, essentially have our teeth on a comb filter. And are those Well, they could be evolving. We'll get to that. Okay. Um, 
so a comb filter um, is one in which we delay a signal by a set number of samples, delay it again by a set number of samples, delay it again by a set number of samples, and it creates a harmonic uh, resonance type effect to it. In the physical real world, you can get the same effect by placing your head too close to a wall, where essentially then a sound hits your ear, it also hits the wall, and then it's such a short period of time between when, if I have my head right here, sound hits my ear, then it hits the wall and gets into my ear on the first reflection. And because the two of those reflections are so close together, close enough that they're within the audible frequency range, it'll create a kind of filtered resonant effect typically formed. So we can get home filter effects in the real world by placing microphones too close to walls, by having speakers be too close to walls. And what happens is we get a delay of the signal that's a short enough delay that's within the audible frequency spectrum. Does that kind of make sense physically? It's a delay of a signal over a certain number of samples, same number of samples amplitude down, same number of samples attenuated down, same number of samples attenuated down. Home or teeth, tooth, typically consistent. C O M B. Cone? Yeah, there may be. So in this case, it's a delay, but a filter is a delay. A low pass filter is just a delay. We've already learned in many ways. It just delays the signal, averages them together, creates a basic low pass filter. So let's see what a basic low pass filter comb filter sounds like. Signal delay uh, time. We'll initially set the delay time to something really small. Like let's say, um, oh, 100 hertz. So, well, the time being, we'll just keep it like this. Real, real long. So uh, we'll set sig equal to, uh, let's for the moment we'll do a sign off that AR, the frequency of 200. Six is on n dot AR sig in. Max delay time is delay T, and we'll talk about what this is in a minute. Delay time, delay T. And if it's zero point yeah. oh, thank you. Oh, oh, of course, that's the wrong things now because of stuff I've got. So, oh, dot um, out device is equal to what the hell do we call it? Zoom audio D.
So max delay time for the time being, we'll set to one. And we'll set uh, now delay time. And then we'll set x dot kr 0 0.001. You know, there's something weird going on there. There's some weird stuff on. Let's keep digging in and trying to figure out what's going on. Decay time. I'm usually set to zero. Just set decay time. Okay, R zero to one. Label. Okay. Label. Yeah, not a lot going on, but it's kind of interesting so far. Let's go to it differently. We'll go to um, impulse. Now they are zero point five. Uh, let's keep going with this. I know you're going, why in the heck is going on here? I will. Yeah, I will. Oh, here. That's part of my problem. Okay. Whoa. So what's happening here? What do you hear? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, you do. Keep on, you're doing good. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, right now we're just hearing that. Yep, yep, good, good. So let's say, oh, sorry. Yes. So let's say we wanted to represent this actually as an audible frequency. So if we're saying 100 to one as a frequency, um, 
how do we convert um, frequency to um, period? So one divided by frequency gives us period. Likewise, one divided by period would give us, one divided by frequency gives us period. One divided by period gives us frequency. They're a reciprocal relationship to each other. Huh? On the pole over here on the left, you notice how we have free delay time. Oh, and then the K time. It's just our values right now. Okay, so I've got a frequency of 97 Hertz, which means there's a delay time for a period of essentially one one hundredth of a second and a decay time of nearly a second. So what, what's going on? What do we hear? What do we hear here? We're hearing an impulse only, right? In the top left corner. So we have a frequency of nearly 100 hertz, which corresponds to delay time of one one hundredth of a second. And we have a decay time of nearly a second. Oh, okay. Now, if we got rid of the one over the delay time, we No, because we're looking for delay time in seconds. Still, we can't pass in frequency. So that's over here. When I'm in the top left corner, where we have a frequency of essentially zero. We only hear a single sound. Uh, it's, it's nine, ten thousandths of a hertz, but... For the delay effect, the comb filter. And yeah, maybe this would help. Sorry. So we're going to have an impulse. So we'll do this. We'll we'll take everything out right now. We'll. Comment it out. Whoa. Comment out everything. So we have an impulse once per second. Everyone hears that? Cool. Move my round around, it doesn't do anything. Now we're going to have a delay time of 0 0.5 and a decay time of 0 0.5 by default. And we'll turn our comb filter on. So our delay time, or the time that a sample gets delayed by, is half a second. And our decay time, or how long it takes for it to decay by 60 decibels, is half a second. Yep, because we're decaying by half a second all of it. So now if I go up to one second. We're going to get some 
you hear that little bit at the offbeat? That, 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 where it's down by 60 decibels nearly. If we made this two. And so is that what's happening? Hasn't fully decayed. So what we're having happen right now is we get an impulse and then at the at one second mark we get a new impulse. We're taking this signal. Yeah, and we're putting it through a delay of 0 0.5 seconds. And so then it comes back out. And so then we hear a delayed sample at 0 0.5 seconds. We're hearing the original sound as well. That's that large, that's that louder click. Sure. And so in that case, the tone delay, or the tone filter itself, is no, it adds whatever we were delayed to it. And the delayed signal is also multiplied by some factor so that it's less, so that it's attenuated down in this case, so that if it's a one second decay time, it would be attenuated by negative 30 decibels at the half second point. Yeah. So if we, had a decay time of 1000, which we'll essentially call infinity. So it's just gonna keep building up louder and louder on itself as we put more impulses into the signal. And if I didn't have a limiter here, eventually stuff will blow up. Because it's just getting louder and louder on itself with every single impulse. Because we're not, because we're not attenuating it, we get a new signal. And we get the signal replaced at 0 0.5. That gets decayed by another 0 0.5. So then it plays here. So now we have two of these playing at once. That gets decayed. It comes back around, then we have three, then we have four, then we have five, then we have six, because the old signal is never fading out. The original sound is the only one. Sure. So if you go back to that drum, the blue signal being kind of the echo of the delay, and the old back itself. Yeah. So if we did sig little sound in dot ar zero. Did you try to this is right. Let's see. Put that down. We'll put our limiter back on. Yo. 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 Hey. Yo. Hello. Hello. Yo. Hello. 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 Because our decay time is a hundred thousand seconds, we essentially set up a loop test with a loop length of half a second. If this was set to one, hey, you hear my delay one time, but then because it's at negative sixty dBs after a second, which is essentially infinity in digital, it's totally faded out. You can modulate the decay time. So again here, let's turn delay time. So now we've got delay time as a frequency. We turn that frequency into an actual period value. So again, we're saying our delay time is 100 hertz to zero hertz. And we're getting that period or that delay time which is a reciprocal relationship of one divided by delay time. So we're saying that frequency is 100 to zero. Of the delay time is a function of frequency right now, it's hertz. 
So that's our unit, if you will. And but what the comb filter wants is delay time in seconds, not in hertz. Okay. To convert from frequency to period, it's one divided by frequency. It would go from 100 seconds to zero seconds. Yeah. Not really. I mean, you could do that, and there's some value to having those larger values. What? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. So. So right now. Right now. You got some distortion. You got some distortion. Because it's too loud. Because it's too loud. We got a decay time of decay time of two seconds. Of two seconds. And now we have a delay time of half a second replication. And we have a decay time of 1.8 seconds. You hear a couple iterations of my voice. And if we extend that decay time. Because maybe I want my voice to resonate at 100 hertz with the comb filter. I guess I'm not understanding. You could, but I want to say right now I want to know that my voice is being resonated at 100 hertz. 85, 6700. Because it's being delayed at a period of one hundredth of a second or so, and then that gets attenuated each time, because that's in the range of the hearing, it ends up sounding like it's resonated at 67 hertz. So, is it's so that I can take the frequency if I want. I did your first So, two sixty two, one The resonance, the frequency. Where is that being changed? In the late time. Yeah, but frequency and period are inverse relationships. So if I have a frequency of 400 hertz, the period is 0 0.0025. So they're the same. Frequency and period are the same. They're related. If I wanted to have a delay time of one hundredth of a second, that's roughly a frequency of 99, or it should be 100, actually. Right? Because one divided by 100 is one one hundredth of a second. It's just converting seconds or length, time length, versus frequency or hertz. If we delay a signal by a periodic amount, and that's within the range of human hearing, it resonates. We essentially hear the resonance of that frequency. It's not happening. It's happening because of how a cold filter works. This is a comb filter. 
That one makes sense. As a filter just changes frequency or changes time-based signals in some sort of way. In this case, this filter is just creating a resonance based on the number of times the signal gets delayed and at what the attenuation of that is. If I have a decay of zero, then hey, hey, hey. Hey. hey, oh, you don't hey. hear the original, I oh, forget. Original. So we actually should, um, delay sig, yeah. Hey, 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 hey. And again, if we replace them, this actually makes this part a little bit more clear. Well, don't do it. It's summation. So now we have a delay time of roughly half a second, which is a little off, and a decay time of zero. So you hear the original and you hear one iteration of the delayed signal. Yeah, if I make this shorter, the delay time now, you can hear the you can hear them together. And if they get close enough, it starts to sound like they're the same event. And then if we increase the decay time, You know what you're missing here? Yeah. Sam and Fletcher, we're going to play your pieces next week. And I'm sorry about that, but just so you guys know. Oh, so it's all good. All right. Um, so, frequency is equal to. One divided by period. So if we have a sine wave with a hertz of one, frequency of one, period is one second. So if we have one hertz is equal to one divided by one second, right? That makes sense to everyone? Okay, if we have a frequency of two, two hertz, what is our period? Uh-huh, which equals half of a second. So each of these sine waves take half a second to complete. 
just a proof. It's just a, yeah. the, the time that it takes for a, a sine wave to complete is equivalent to a frequency. It's a, a reciprocal relationship. So all we're doing right here it was we're saying if I want to represent delay time as a frequency, I need to then go one divided by that frequency in order to get time as seconds. Because it's repeating itself at a quick enough frequency as to be in the audible frequency spectrum. So what we're doing in point is shifting the small part out. What we're doing in 20 is we're converting hertz yeah. to time. Yeah. So we're just changing the the unit. Okay, I see. Does that make sense for everyone else? So, fair cap. Oh, I don't like that. Uh, wow, wow, wow. Wow, wow, wow. Wow, wow, wow. Wow, wow, wow. So, what's my frequency of the white signal? Four. Bearcat. Oh, okay. There are four humps, four complete completions of the most fundamental frequency. Yeah, yeah, one. Uh huh. Yep, so there's one, two, three, four. And let's assume that they're all equidistant and stuff. So we have four hertz. We know this is one second because we're in hertz. Okay, so what does that mean? How long does it take, take each completion of this frequency? How long does that take in time? Uh -uh. This is one second. So if we've got four of them in one second. How long does each one take? Quarter of a second. Yeah. One divided by four gives us a period of what? Yeah. So if I wanted a frequency of four, let's say I take this and I set this to four. Four. Does anyone did anyone watch Holy Moly? Horse Marshall Jewel? Four. 
Um, so this is frequency, four hertz. One divided by four equals a delay time of a quarter of a second. If I want a frequency of two hertz, that equals a delay time of half a second. If I want a frequency of 100 hertz, that equals a delay time of a hundredth of a second. If our decay time was zero, we only hear the first cycle, cycle or iteration of the delay. Okay. Tell me more. Huh? Tell me more. Because the decay is much longer than the delay, we're getting overlapping signals. No, you're good. So if we have our first iteration. And let's say this is one second. And we know we're going to get another one at one second. Yeah? yeah. If I take this sample and I delay it by some amount, And then I multiply it by some amount. What's going to happen to it? So literally been delayed by some amount of time. And let's assume for the time being, I multiply by zero point. Uh -huh. And then out of this, so then I'll go back into two places. One, I'll go back into my delay line. The other place will be out. That's affecting our decay time. Okay. So let's say I also have a delay. This is confusing. But let's say I have a decay, a delay time of zero point uh, two five. Okay. So the impulse comes in. It gets held for zero point two five seconds. It gets multiplied, and let's assume right now it's just will be in linear land, so it's one. It gets multiplied by 0 0.25 and then it gets spent out. So it gets put here. If this is 0 0.5 seconds, this is 0 0.25 seconds. We're going to get a impulse that has an amplitude of 0 0.25. That's a bad color. It has an amplitude of 0 0.25. Right? Everyone okay with that? So it's gone back into our delay system. It's been delayed by another 0 0.25 seconds. It's been multiplied by 0 0.25 again. So we know that it's gonna be at the 0 0.5 second mark. And what's the value of it gonna be? Two five times 0 0.25, 0 0.0625. So another quarter of this, there's half, there's a quarter. So we have an amplitude of zero point. So it's not 
Zero point zero six two five. The amplitude of them. Okay. And so then this would go back in and get delayed again. So it'd come out at zero point seven five, and we'd have zero point zero six two five times zero point two five equals zero point zero one five six two five, which is a quarter of this. At some point, it is attenuated so much as to be rendered inaudible. Because it's getting multiplied by a factor of 0 0.25. Let's say our multiplication factor was one. What would happen? <laughs> yes. We would have at 0 0.25, we'd have one. At 0 0.5, we'd have one. At 0 0.75, we'd have one. Uh huh. K is defined as the amount of time for a signal to be attenuated by 60 decibels. That doesn't have a direct correlation to how we were just showing it, but 60 decibels, essentially in digital land, equivalently, equiv um, is equivalent to being fully uh, diminished. The K time. It's just instead of being represented by. Uh, attenuation factor it's saying how long does it take for that signal to be attenuated by 60 decibels yes as a function of time or as a function of of uh, zero to one essentially um, yeah so if we were saying um so since it's a function of one one second decay is one second 60 decibels so again okay let's say here we put in a decay of one and we're going to use the microphone for the time being one being one second one 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 so what do you hear yeah yeah so if i had it set to zero now what do you hear? Now what do you hear? Now 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 you hear one single thing. That's why it's hard to represent it as like a a, a multiplication amount. Yeah. So zero. So we did zero point zero or zero point five. Yo 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 yo. You should hear one 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 one. Not quite. Uh, let's try seven five one. One, 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 right? And we have it set to one, 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 two, one, 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 Yeah, in theory. But it's also based on the delay time. So if I set it to a thousand, what's essentially happening? Yeah, the decay time's so long that it functionally never really decays out. Say again? Well, decay time's set to a thousand seconds. So it's a functionally never decaying. So it's essentially like you're multiplying by 0 0.99. It's getting a little bit less over time, but not really. 
So let's say max delay time we set to four, delay time we set to four. Uh, we can find out in a second. One. One. Two. One. Two. One. Two. 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 One. Two. Two. Three. Three. One. Two. Two. Three. Two. Two. Four. Well, except the K time is set to a thousand. So in a thousand seconds. How much? Great. In 16 minutes. Yeah. into channel one of your interface. Um, oh, S dot options. Yeah, whatever your global level is set to, it does the same thing. So then um, O dot in device is equal to, um, I think it's big knob studio. So now it's looking at the big knob as my input device and saying my output to zoom. And then when I hit reboot, it would reboot. Okay. Sure. Um, say that again. Well, one is set to zero. Yeah. In terms of like what are you trying to do? No, yeah, you can use multiple inputs. Yeah, one goes to zero, two goes to one. Two. And then if you create a multi device, an aggregated device, whatever order they're in, so if you had your big knob, then you have black audio coming in oh, from something else in the, yeah, in the audio setting. Make sense for people on this? Yeah. Again, this, because we're emphasizing certain frequency through our delay time. Yeah, 
now to subvert the fuck out of there. Oh, but we're out of time. Yeah! This is the fun part! Okay, okay, okay. Max delay time, 40 seconds. Um, gosh, that bothers me so much. Um, arguments. Delay T equal to one. Okay, T equal to 1,000. Are you working? 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 Um, that lag. And I will show a better demo of this next week. Hey, 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 hey,
Yeah. 